What is up my people? It is Mucky here. I hope you guys have been keeping well. Long time no fucking see. It's been a fucking hot minute, I'll tell you what. Actually, the last video that I posted was 2nd of December, 2022. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to myself. I've always said this, these videos are my pieces of reflection. Just to recap why I make these videos is, my father made a lot of videos. He filmed a lot of videos, I should say, when I was younger of me and my brother and just like other families. And when I got to see those videos in my older years, I was like, damn, that, there's history. There's something there that I can reflect on, look back and truly cherish. So I appreciate my father for capturing those moments. So this is sort of the inspiration that I've carried on within now my life. So yeah, um, welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please consider liking, going down below and smashing the subscribe button. For my Thai viewers, Sawadi Krap Pom Maki Nadaigan, Mladen Mladenovic YouTube channel. The previous couple of videos that I made of me speaking a little bit of Thai in Thailand actually popped off and I ended up getting quite a, I think I ended up getting like over a hundred subscribers to the channel. So if you are, one of my Thai viewers, the rest of the video will be in English, so Moving on from that, what's happened? Man, a lot has happened since that last video I did in Chiang Mai and in Bangkok. The whole reason for me going to Bangkok, or I should say to Chiang Mai, was I was preparing for my first run, running event. It was a 10 kilometer run for the 2XU wellness run that supported Beyond Blue. And I figured I wanted to do a little bit of high altitude training and in Chiang Mai, if you've ever been there, there's a lot of mountains. It's very high up. And on top of that, the heat as well punishes you. So the air, air is a lot, <laughs> I'm butchering the science, but the air is thinner. Therefore, like it forces your body to go into, you know, it tests itself and it really tested me and I absolutely loved it because when I came back from Thailand and did the training in Chiang Mai, I smashed my first 10K run and we got the dub boys. We got the fucking dub. I'll just make sure there's no light. Oh, but anyway, you guys can see that. Um, yeah, man, 10K run in the bag. Got ourselves a nice uh, zoom in on that. So yeah, after that run, shortly after the new year kicked off and then, oh, I cut my mullet off. So I, I no longer have a mullet. I am growing one back, but it's gonna be maintained and it's not gonna be as big as last time. <laughs> I think shortly after that, I was in preparation for my first half marathon and that was fucking insane. We got the dub boys. We got the fucking dub. Hell yeah. Half marathon. Let's go. And I was able to achieve this in two hours and 31 minutes and 11 seconds. So I don't know if you guys can see that because of the, uh, there you go. Yeah, that was really cool because I was, I was working towards something. So, and you know, something just bigger than my reality. And that was so much fun and I had I unfortunately ended up getting like a, ended up experiencing two injuries um, three weeks leading up to the event. And, you know, I still pulled it off. We still got the dub. So dubs in the, in the comments down below, throw the W's in there. Yeah, shortly after that, I've moved into my new home. Boys, we've made it. We fucking made it into the new house. This house has been a work in progress. I bought this block of land in 2019 and finally building was completed uh, two months ago. So yeah, it's a two, it's a double garage, four bedroom, two lounge house. Um, the room that I'm in right now is the second lounge room, but I requested that we put up a wall and a door 
to convert this into an office space. Honestly, I'm not gonna be using two lounge rooms, let alone four bloody bedrooms. I'll use one of the bedrooms in one of the lounges. And yeah, anyway, you could even argue that this can be a fifth bedroom, providing that I create a, um, like set up a wardrobe, you know? So yeah, what's interesting is, is I entered ownership of this property and, you know, taking on a mortgage in the worst economic, or I should say in the worst interest rate, right, or the, oops, oh shit. Or the uh, highest interest rate rises, like in my generation, we're talking about like mid 6%. And you know, for, for the older viewers, if there are any older viewers watching this, they'll be like, well, back in my day, interest rates were fucking 15, 20%. It's like, yeah, but houses were like fucking $3, you know, and your wages were like 40 cents. So, you know, it take you one year to save up a deposit. Whereas now it's harder, man. It's harder, um, especially where I work. I'm not gonna say where I work, but I, what I, organization I work for, but I assess home loans. I see live data and how much this has impacted, you know, people, you know, around my age, you know, mid mid 20s, early 30s that want to, you know, buy their new home and it's like it ain't they can't do it and they're getting declined left, right and center, which sucks but that's the world we live in today. I'm very fortunate enough that I got in at the right time, right place and made the right deal. And that's something I've been saying to myself for the past 10 years. I'm always at the right place at the right time to meet the right people to make the right deal. It seems like no matter what I do, I prosper every day for the last 10 years and uh, it works. <laughs> Outside of all of this, my braces, my braces have come off, man. That was pretty cool. Got them off uh, a couple of months ago, I want to say. I don't remember the exact date, but I almost I was almost wearing my braces for five years. <laughs> nuts. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, I'm more confident now in terms of smiling. And that has transferred into other areas of life where talking to people, connecting with people, networking with people, really at any point speaking to people, I just feel a lot more confident in myself that people are looking me in the eyes instead of looking down at my teeth, which is something that I experienced for like 20, 22 years. Outside of that, you're probably realizing that, uh, that the quality is fucking magnificent right now. And that's because about six months ago, life was getting a little bit boring and you'd probably agree with me when life gets a little bit boring you start to either get stuck in your own head or you start to enter other people's lanes and that's a disturbance you start to turn into a liability and for me i'm not having any of that just because i've been through that for you know quite a long period of time in my life and i've made a promise to myself that I'll no longer subscribe to becoming a liability, but being the best possible version of myself. And in saying that, the actions that I took to do that was found a new hobby. And the new hobby was filming. Not a surprise. <laughs> I love making videos. You guys probably haven't seen the videos I have been making, but if you follow me on Instagram right here, that's my personal one. You can check out my filming portfolio right there and have a look at some of the work that I've been doing. And let me break that down for you. Over the past six months, I picked up this camera. It's the Sony a6400. And I'm using a lens that I just bought two days ago, which is the Sony 11 millimeter F1.8. I needed this lens because two shoots ago, I was filming for a client and I realized that based off the movement of the client, and how quickly they were moving, I needed something that could capture wide angle. Generally speaking, I would normally film on a prime 35 millimeter. I have the Sony 35 millimeter, also F1.8 with OSS. Need the OSS, Sony A6400. No stabilization whatsoever. That is why I'm on a tripod at the moment. And forgive me for my 
Yui Boom 2, turning off. So yeah, picked up this camera, got it for a good deal from my boy CK. Shout out to you CK, love you to death bro. He took his time to induct me on how to operate this camera. I thought it was just record and that's it. Nah man, you have to learn ISO, you have to learn shutter speed, you have to learn aperture. Yeah, yeah, those are the three things. That's part of the triangle. I may have mistaken them for one or the other. I know how to use it. Sometimes I forget the, what they're called, but forgive me, I'm not an expert yet. Um, and that's okay. I did not need to be an expert to make videos. And I specifically wanted to make Instagram reels because that was something that I enjoyed watching from other content creators. And I had a couple of mates that said, hey, you know, you can come film me doing X, Y, and Z. And we did that. And then it got to the point where people wanted to hire me. Um, and I charged pretty much close to peanuts. It was just for the sake of building foundations. Then I did another price increase when I got a little bit more comfortable and confident. I ended up shooting a multi-video series across the country I literally flew up to Queensland for this. Recently I filmed when I was in Thailand about two weeks ago for a company. Um, I'm not going to mention them yet just because it hasn't been released but that will be released very soon. If you follow me on my Instagram page at chillbop that video will be dropping very soon. And yeah, uh, as of recently, I did another price increase literally two days ago. And it was amazing because I, I, was, I, was in, I was experiencing imposter syndrome. And it wasn't until I broke down the finances of the cost of using the equipment, the cost of me traveling, the cost of me on site filming, the cost of editing, the cost of color grading, the cost of audio. And by the time I did my calculation, what I was charging and what I had listed was completely different. I'll be transparent. Um, it, this came as a shock and a surprise to me. One Instagram reel can cost you anywhere between like a thousand to ten thousand dollars if you're looking at professional high quality content curated for businesses and companies and they are willing to spend that because they have those types of budgets to spend that. And it goes without saying it's a tax write-off for the respective business company or entity. So yeah, I then acknowledged my breakdown, realized that I was still undercutting myself but I was charging double from what I was filming, what I was charging previously. Anyway, long story short, the day that I did my price increase, which was two days ago, I had three different, that's two, I had three different businesses contact me and we've booked them in and deposits have been paid. And I'm there like, talk about synchronicity, talk about knowing your self-worth, talk about dissolving the imposter syndrome by breaking down why you're worth that much and acknowledging that is what you're worth, backed by the actions and evidence, you know, the supporting evidence, you know, in my case, I filmed 26 projects. I've made fucking over a hundred videos in short form content. And I was just like, yeah, f fucking oath I'm charging that at the very least. And that's exactly what I'm worth. I share this to be transparent. I do not share this to flex, to be cocky, to be on my high horse. I share this because I'm starting a new business once again. And just like other new business owners, you're going to feel imposter syndrome. You're going to feel like you're not worth anything. That's okay. That's normal. It's generating so much evidence in the process and getting better at your craft where you acknowledge your progression and that equally reflects with the amount that you are charging for your professional service. That's the difference. That's when you turn from an amateur to a professional. And for me, having that realization like just psh, opened up a new baseline. And when you enter the new baseline, it's hard to go back down again. 
So yeah, uh, apologies for the uh, business mindset masterclass for beginners. <laughs> but yeah, getting that off my mind and sharing that with you, I think it's important because when you get to teach someone something, you get to learn it a second time. And that's, that's something that Jim Quick had taught me when I read his book a couple of years ago. And I'm immensely grateful for that. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. I think I've covered most things. Yeah, that's all I got. If you have enjoyed today's video, consider liking, subscribing, I might post something, I might not, but I'll definitely be posting on my business page. Check me out, follow me there. And if you have any questions about my camera setup, or if you have any questions about wanting to start your own filming business, reach out, reach out anytime. Like I said, if I get to teach someone something, I get to learn it a second time. And then you can do that as well and learn it a second time. And pretty much double your chances of retaining and increasing your chances of applying that information. Knowledge is power, but taking action is a superpower. I'll leave it on that note. Thanks for your time, guys. Love, peace, and bliss.